In the last lesson, you looked at some simple probability questions. In this lesson, we're going to look at more complicated probability questions like we might see in our probability and statistics class that comes after this. We're going to begin by looking at a table that represents some results from a survey. Students were asked whether they'd ever posted a video on YouTube. We have a column that tells us how many people said no. We have a column that tells us how many people said yes. And we have a total column that tells us how many people were, there were in all. We also broke this down by gender. So we have a row for females, a row for males, and a total row. So this tells us in this table that there, was, there, were, there were 874 people in all who had been surveyed. What fraction of the students that were surveyed had ever posted a video on YouTube? Well, those are the people in the yes column. And it's not asking gender, so we know that's going to be 292 people out of the 874. So we're going to write down a fraction, 292 out of 874. Sometimes we re report an answer like this as a fraction. Oftentimes we'll leave it as is. Other times we'll put it in lowest terms. And in lowest terms, this is going to turn out to be 146 over 437. We get that by dividing numerator and denominator by 2. We may also report the answer as a decimal. When we divide this out, remember we use division to change a fraction into a decimal. Divide the numerator by the denominator. 292 divided by 874. When we round it off to four decimal places, and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. We'll round everything off to four decimal places when we write a decimal. We'll get 0 0.3341 as a percent. Remember to change a decimal to a percent. You move your decimal over two places and stick a percent sign after it. That's the same thing as multiplying by 100. So the percent of students who had ever posted a video on YouTube out of this survey was 33.41%. Now, what fractions of those students were male? Well, we're going to look at the male row as 326 out of the total number of students, which was 874. So the fraction of students who were surveyed who were male students was 326 out of 874. Now in lowest terms, that turns out to be 163 over 437. We're going to write that as a decimal. And again, we'll do that by dividing 326 by 874. Just use a calculator. Now, when we do that division, the calculator shows us 0 0.372.99771. But we're only going four decimal places. Now, since the last, the next thing that we're knocking off, or the first thing we're knocking off is a 9, we have to add 1 here. So we're going to write, record this as 0 0.373 or 37.30%. Let's answer another question about this survey. What fraction of students are male and had ever posted a video on YouTube? Well, now we're looking at two things. We're looking at the people who were male, which is this row right here. And we're looking at the people who had posted a video on YouTube. That's the yes column. So we need to see where those that row and column intersect. That gives us 134 people who were male who had posted a video on YouTube out of the 874. So the fraction of students who, had, who were male who had ever posted a video on YouTube was 134 out of 874, or 67 out of 437. As a decimal, which is the way we'll actually record most of these things, when we round that off, we get 0.1533, or 15.33%. Now, let's ask, ask a similar question. Suppose we pick a student at random from the survey. We want to know the probability the student was male and had ever posted a video on YouTube. 
Well, that's actually the same thing as saying what fraction of the students were male and had posted a video on YouTube. And we figured that out just a minute ago. We got that that was 0 0.1533. We're going to write these as decimals. So the probability that a student that we pick is male and had posted a video on YouTube is the same thing as the, f the decimal who had posted a video on YouTube who were male. Alright, let's look at another example. We have people re uh, who were surveyed about drinking diet sodas. Do, if you drink soda, do you prefer a diet version? And we have females and males there. If we pick a survey respondent at random, what's the probability the survey respondent was female? Well, the uh, people, the females were 130. There were 262 in all who were uh, surveyed, so we'll get 130 out of 262, and then we'll turn that into a decimal by dividing. That's 0 0.4962. That's the probability that we would report. All right, let's look at another question. Same survey, what's the probability that we picked a person at random and we got somebody who preferred a diet soda. We're only looking at the people who answered yes to the question, I prefer a diet soda. Well, it's not asking female or male, so we're going to look at the all column. So we had 94 people who preferred diet sodas out of the total 262 people who were surveyed. So we're going to write that as 94 out of 262. Or if we write a decimal for that, we'll get 0.35. Eight, eight. Now, let's look at one more example here. Let's say we choose a person at random from the survey. Let's figure out the probability that that person was a female who preferred diet soda. So we're looking at two things. We're looking for females who preferred diet soda. So we look in the female column and the yes row. That was 58 people in all who preferred, who were females who preferred diet sodas out of the 262 survey respondents. So that means that our probability of getting a female who preferred diet soda is 58 out of 262. Or as a decimal, we would write that as 0.2214. That is going to lead us to another concept, slightly more complicated, called conditional probability. And you'll do more with this in your probability and statistics class that comes after this course, or maybe you're taking this course at the same time. Conditional probability is working like this. Suppose we know some other event has already occurred. This is going to change the probability of a specific event. The conditional probability, we call, of B given A is given by this formula. Now this little bar here means given. And we can actually think of that nearly as being a fraction bar. The probability of one event given that another one occurred is the probability of both of them happening together, which is the stuff that we just talked about, divided by our total or what we're looking at. That's our narrow focus here. Let's look at some examples from some tables from surveys. Let's go back to the diet survey soda, uh, diet soda survey again. Let's say that we choose a survey respondent at random again, but this time, instead of finding the probability the person is female who preferred diet soda, let's look at the probability the person's female given that the person preferred diet soda. That means this time we are only interested in the people in this row, the people who preferred diet soda. So our total number of people who preferred diet soda was 94. That's our denominator. The numerator is going to be the proportion of those who are female, which is going to be 58. The number of people who preferred diet soda was 58 out of 94. So there's our fraction, and if we turn that into a decimal, we'll get 0 0.6170. So that's going to be the probability that we get a person 
from the survey who preferred diet soda. I said that wrong. That the prob found the probability of persons female given that we're picking someone who preferred diet soda. Now let's look at a slightly different question, which at first may look like the same thing. This time we're still looking at females and diet soda, but this time we are given that the person is female. So this time we're going to restrict ourselves just to the people who are female. So we're only going to look at this column of females. There were 130 females in the survey. Out of those, 58 of them preferred diet soda. So this time the probability that we pick somebody who wants diet soda, given that the person is female, is 58 out of 130, or as a decimal, when we divide that out, we get 0.4462, 4,462 ten thousandths. Let's contrast that with what we just did a minute ago. Just a minute ago, we looked at the probability that someone was female given that they liked diet soda, or the preferred diet soda. So we had a different group that we were drawing from. This time, we picked the diet soda preferers over or out of the females. Okay, let's look at some more conditional probability. This time we're going to deal with one that's just a little bit longer. This time we've got a, another survey of people who were in grades 4 through 6 in some school districts in Michigan who were asked about what's the most important things thing in school. Making good grades, being popular, or being good in sports. So we've got rows for grades, for popularity, and for sports and then we have columns for a rural district, a suburban district, and an urban district. Then we have the total of all the people. There were 478 survey respondents in all. 149 came from rural districts, 151 from suburban, 178 from urban districts. Out of all those people, 247 said grades were most important, 141 said being popular was most important, and 90 said sports was most important. Again, these are out of our 4th through 6th graders. So here's our breakdown of our results. Now, let's look at this table. We'll pick a student at random, and we are going to find the probability that a student was from a suburban school and thought uh, sports were the most important. Notice this time this is an and. This is not a conditional probability. So we're finding the people who were suburban students who thought sports was most important. So that means we had 22 students who fit in both of those categories out of the total number of people who were surveyed, which was 478. So this time for the and, it's 22 out of 478, which is 0 .0460 when we do that on a calculator, or 4.6%. So only a small percentage of students from who were uh, in the survey were suburban students who thought sports was most important. Now let's contrast that with a conditional probability where we have given. The word af the information after given tells us what needs to be in our denominator. Given the s that sports were the most important, well, 90 people said that sports were the most important, so this is going to be our denominator. Now, out of those people who said sports were most important, 22 of those were from suburban district, from a suburban district. So the percentage there is 22 out of 90, which as a decimal is 0.2244. No, I take that back as 0.2444. I miscalculated there. Now let's look again at our survey information. We're going to choose a student at random again and find the probability the student thought that sports were most important given the fact that the student was from a suburban school. This time we're given that it's from a suburban school, so we're only going to concern ourselves with the area or this column here that has suburban. So our denominator, the number of people that we were working with, was only the 151 from suburban schools not all of the survey respondents. 
out of those 151 who responded, the ones who thought sports were most important were 22. So we've got 22 out of 151. And if we write that as a decimal, we get 0.1457. So about almost 15% of the suburban students thought that sports were most important. And so we're, we've got a fair, a, about a 15% probability that we're going to get a student who thinks sports are most important, given if they were picking from a suburban school. Now, one last look at the survey about YouTubers. <coughs> let's suppose that we pick a student from the survey at random, and let's figure out the probability the student was male, given that the student had ever posted a video on YouTube. Again, the word given tells us we're only going to focus on one uh, row or one column. And this time we're picking, for the given, we're picking the ones who had posted on YouTube. Those are our yes people. So we're going to look in this column only, only those 292 people who had posted on YouTube. And we're going to look at how many of those were male. Well, there were 134 males out of the 292. So the probability that a student was male given that they had posted on YouTube. So here's male, here's YouTube. That's 134 out of uh, 292. And that's going to be 0.4589 when we write that as a decimal. All right, let's just look at a couple more here. Let's look at the, let's kind of reverse things. This time, let's pick a student at random, find the probability the student had posted a video on YouTube given that the student was male. That means we are restricting our interest only to the males in this survey. So we're only looking at this row of male students. In this row of male students, there were only 326, so we're going to concentrate on them that's going to be our denominator. And out of those 326, we're going to find those who posted a video on YouTube. That's the yes column. So that was 134. And so the probability that a student had posted a video on YouTube, given the student was male, is 134 out of 326. Or if we put that as a decimal, that's going to be 0.4110. Now, similar question. Let's suppose we pick a student at random from the survey, and let's figure out the probability that the student had posted a video on YouTube given that the student was female, just for a little variety. And so that's going to mean we're dealing with only the row of females. So that means we have 548 of those who are female. And out of those 548 students who are female, there were 158 of them who had posted on YouTube. 158 out of 548. We'll write that as a decimal. We'll get 0.2883. So there's our probability that we would select, a, a, that we would, uh, let me try that again. That's the probability the student had ever posted a video on YouTube given that the student was female. One last question. Let's say we pick a student at random again from the survey. We're going to find the probability that the student was female given that the student had never posted a video on YouTube. We're given the never part, that's the no people. That's the population we're working with. That's this column here. This column has 582 respondents. Now out of those 582 respondents, we want to pick the females. Well, in that column by itself, there were 390 female students. So the probability that we pick a student who is female, given that we already know the student had never posted a video on YouTube, is 390 out of 582. And as a decimal, that comes out to be 0.6701. That's actually pretty close to two-thirds. So in summary, if we're looking at, at a more complicated probability, if we have the word and in there, we're going to look at both uh, where those two different 
conditions intersect based out of the total of all the people in the survey or whatever other situation we're in. If we use the word given, we have to look just at a row or a column for our denominator and we find out the people who are in both situations, like both male and never posted or whatever. So let's look at one last example here. A researcher was studying the way grocery stores display their cereal boxes. And uh, cereal boxes were either on a bottom, middle, or top shelf. And the different cereals were either um, marketed to adults or to children. There were 24 people, there were 24 combinations here. So let's look at the probability that the cereal was on the middle shelf and targeted to children. Well, here's the middle shelf, so we'll look at that column. We'll look at the row that has children in it. There were six cereals on the middle shelf that were targeted to children out of 24. So it's 6 out of 24, or that's 1 fourth, so that's 0.25. Now a slightly different question though is what's the probability that the cereal was that we pick at random was on the middle shelf given that it was targeted to children? Well, if the ones that were targeted to children, there were eight cereals that were targeted to children. Six of those cereals were on the middle shelf, so that's six out of eight, or three fourths. So as a decimal, that's 0.75. Thank you for watching.